Welcome to part two of the The Last of Us modding tutorials. Today we're going to take a look at NPC spawns and how to edit them in many different ways. Where is their data and how can we modify it? Inside pack23.psarc there are pack files and also in-game 12 pack files. The regular pack files are the map meshes themselves, whereas in-game 12 dot pack files hold the nav mesh, spawn data for NPCs, props, etc. We're going to start with modifying NPCs. The Last of Us has a test map included called Puzzle Scenarios, and this is a perfect map for testing any kind of mod. So the file we are going to edit is Puzzle Scenarios in-game 12 dot pack. If we open up this file in a hex editor, we can identify NPC Combat Training 9 as the NPC in the back there with the shotgun. In a link below, I have a handy little chart and some documentation on what data does what in these in-game files for NPCs. So check that out after the video, if you please. At the very top of each NPC's data is the spawn coordinates. This first block here is X, the second block here is Y, and this block here is Z. I'm not sure what this block is for or this, but this uh, data here is for rotation. So keep that in mind. Let's say we want to spawn this guy high up in the sky. Well, what we would do is highlight the Y coordinate and make sure we have it on Big Endian. Now all we need to do is edit the float value to something silly, like I don't know, let's make it 40, and apply it. What we do now is we save it, we transfer the file into the game, reload actors on the quick menu. And if it's done correctly, he should fall right out of the sky. Just like that. <laughs> and that is how you edit coordinates of an NPC. What if we want to change what weapon they're holding? Well, this couldn't be more simple. All you need to do is locate the string that has the weapon in it and then change it to whatever you like. So let's say we want to give him a rifle instead. Rifle, bolt, hunter. And then after that, we blank the rest of the string, save it, transfer the file into the game, and then load back. It couldn't be more simple. But what if we wanted to make him our friend? All we need to do is find the string for his faction. His faction is Hunter, but if we change it to something like Buddy, and then put it in the game, we reload actors again, and he's going to come and join Joel and Ellie. So let's get him to fight his own buddies. But can we do this the other way? Can we turn Ellie into an enemy? If we do a search for Continue Ellie Combat 2, this will be Ellie's spawn for Combat 5. So we look through Ellie's data to find her faction is Ellie. So what if we change this to Hunter? Save it. Reload actors. And now Ellie doesn't quite turn against us, but we can do this. And that's always fun. But what if we want to change the model of the NPC? Well, it couldn't be more simple. At the very bottom of every NPC's data is a string that tells the game what model to load. So if we simply change Hunter to, let's say, Joel, we can fight ourselves. So we save that, put the file in the game, and then reload actors. And there we go, now I can fight myself. You also have to keep in mind that some NPCs have a different arc type to others. For example, a hunter usually has arc human hunter. So if I wanted to change the model to, let's say, Ellie, the result you get is an NPC that doesn't really know what to do with itself. So if we change Arc Human Hunter to Arc Ellie, then Ellie will start working correctly. Also, still being an enemy, you can just do this. 
keep in mind that this works both ways. You can turn Ellie into a hunter or you could turn a hunter into an Ellie that follows you if you also change the faction as well. Hey. Now, what if we want to change the main characters in gameplay or an in-game cutscene? Well, every single chapter has their own const file. Const files hold all the spawn data for every main NPC in the game and all the players' spawns as well. In the Quarantine Zone's case, it's mill const in-game 12. So let's open that up. Now we're on the task Mill City Melee Tutorial IGC. Now to find the spawn data for the character we want to replace, it's sometimes the same as the task name, but not always. So what we'll do is we'll just search for Melee Tutorial until we find Joel. So here, this should be Joel's spawn data for this task. Let's just change that to Tess, save the file, put the file in the game, and then reload actors. And now we have double Tesses, and that's pretty much the way to edit main characters throughout the game. Make sure to find the corresponding const file and just follow these steps and it should be self-explanatory. We just fuck this. Take cover! And after the cutscene ends, we can now take control of Tess. So yeah, player swaps, NPC swaps. It's really, really simple, but make sure when you're swapping a character that they're listed in pack23.txt or you won't be able to load them in. I should also mention that not every character can be swapped with every other character, such as you can't swap male skeletons with female skeleton characters. That includes Ellie. Also, some swaps just don't work because I don't even know why, but there's always progress in the future. So next up, we'll use what we've learned to create a new combat scenario. So look forward to that.